taking responsibility for your life, really? Well, today on our episode of Beyond at Home, we're talking about a cold, harsh bit of reality that you have most likely been dished to you at some point in your life by a loved one, or you have dished to somebody else. What is that piece of advice? We're gonna talk about it today in our episode of Beyond at Home. The big question I want us to wrestle with today is this. Are you taking responsibility for your opportunities or are you taking them for granted? Are you taking them for granted? Are you allowing it to encourage your irresponsibility? See, the unevenness and the unfairness of life can always cause us to act out in ways that we know when we reflect on it, which is simply irresponsible. I don't want that for you and I don't want that in my own life. So I think today what we can look at is something that was introduced 2,000 years ago, something that you and I both know has just existed as a principle in our life, how we can actually go about leveraging the unfairness and the unevenness of life to encourage us in taking responsibility for our piece of the pizza. Let's talk about it. 2,000 years ago, Jesus shared this parable. What's a parable? A parable is really a made up story. It didn't happen. But Jesus used to speak in parables so often because he always wanted to drive home one really clear point. This parable we're going to talk about today, it's going to be all about how we can actually leverage the unfairness and the unevenness of life and what this actually looks like from God's perspective. Because again, we're all about asking this question of are you taking responsibility for your opportunities or are you just taking them for granted? The story that Jesus shared, there was a master, a master who was going away on a long journey. He had three servants that he entrusted some of his wealth to. So he gave his servants each a specific amount of wealth that was kind of measured up to their own ability, right? So one servant, one servant was given from his master five bags of gold. The second servant was given two bags of gold and the third servant was given one bag of gold. And so you know this is important, the master was giving his bags of gold, his wealth to his servants so that he would eventually come back and settle his accounts with them. He was entrusting with them money so that they would actually not just hold on to his wealth, but do something with his wealth and kind of move it forward. So the master goes away on his journey and this is what the servants do. The first servant, servant number one with five bags of gold, he puts his money to work straight away. In fact, he actually doubles the amount of bags of gold that he has. He has 10 bags by the time the master comes back. The second servant with his two bags of gold, he does the same thing. He puts it to work and he actually doubles it. He gets two more bags of gold, four bags of gold all up. It's looking pretty good. But then servant number three with his one bag of gold, well, he actually ran out, made a hole, he dug a hole and he put that one bag of gold in the ground, covered it up. Right, the master's been away for a long time. He comes back and he looks to settle accounts with each of the servants. Remember, he wants to see something done with this money. He's not expecting it just to be put in a hole and covered up. He goes to servant number one, servant number one. Well, he's got five bags of gold to offer to his master. He says, I've doubled it. He's got 10 all up in fact. And this is what the master has to say. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Pretty great deal for servant number one. Servant number two comes up. He's got four bags of gold. He's doubled it again. Two extra more bags from what he was left with. What does his master says? His master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Now, if I was servant number one, I would have been like, well, is that really fair? Like he's getting the same thing for just the two bags. He's like doubled it by two, but I did five. Like same thing, is this fair, is this even? I'll leave it up to you to decide. At the end of the day, this is the master's wealth that he's distributed. But then we get to servant number three. And if you're anything like me, you're feeling a little bit nervous for servant number three. Servant number three was the one who went and buried his bag of gold in the ground. And see servant number three, he starts dishing up these excuses when his master asks for how did you go? How did you go in terms of the wealth that I left you? He starts dishing up these excuses like, wow, master, like, listen, you're actually tough. In fact, I'm a little bit intimidated by you. Like, I was afraid of what I was going to do with your wealth so much so that I just went and dug a hole. I just thought I'd keep it secure and I'd look after it for you. See, the servant says, I was afraid and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. But see here, here is what belongs to you. But his master replied, with this, and you have every right to be nervous for servant number three. His master replies, you wicked, or even you worthless, lazy servant. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would received it back with interest. So he actually goes on to say, take the bag of gold from him, from servant number three, and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has 
will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness. See, it is a rough time for servant number three. Throw him outside into the North Lakes Lake. Jesus always talked in extremes when he would share these parables with people. But the big point that he's driving home is that we all have an uneven amount of opportunity. And at the end of the day, it's actually up to us in terms of how we take responsibility of our uneven amount of opportunity, our uneven amount of privilege. So when it comes to asking the question of, are you taking responsibility for your opportunity? Are you taking it for granted? The challenge this week, the challenge for me this week, for we this week, is to say, I'm gonna to choose to take on my responsibility. Regardless of what your slice of the pie looks like, what your slice of the pizza looks like, no matter how big or how small, that uneven amount of opportunity, that uneven amount of privilege, it has been on, given to you. It's been on loan to you. How are you gonna settle this account? See, what we see in this parable is God's perspective on how we can actually take responsibility for our own opportunities given to us in life. There's so many stories that we get to read about in awesome books where there's a clear hero or protagonist, so many great movies as well, but in none of these hero tales do we read about a hero who doesn't take responsibility for their actions at the end of the movie or at the end of the book. That's why we love the book so much. They don't sit down and, and start listing off all their excuses as to why that they're choosing to be irresponsible. So the challenge for us is to ask ourselves, what can I do with the piece of the pie, the piece of the pizza, the opportunity that's been gifted to me? And for those of us who are followers of Jesus, or for those of us who just have questions around who Jesus is, in fact, for all of us, when we begin to embrace taking ownership of the opportunity that's been gifted to us, when we begin to reflect on that and pay attention to it, we begin to embrace the life that our Heavenly Father has gifted to us, the opportunities that He's given to us on loan, what He's entrusted to us. And in that, we actually can begin to live a life where we can take full responsibility each day for our own actions, for our own decisions, and ultimately not be in a spot where our soul is being eaten away by our own irresponsibility. See, when we begin to embrace the opportunity that God has gifted to us, we begin to embrace the responsibility in our own life. And at the end of the day, you're happiest when you have responsibility. You're happiest when you know that you're taking the steps towards the person you want to become. And you're happiest when you begin to realize that there's a heavenly father that loves us so much that he's actually entrusted with us an opportunity to embrace life and embrace life to the full. I'm still here, I just stepped out of here.